Welcome back to the CMMC Readiness Series. In this series, we're focused on implementation. So if you just wanna sit back and relax and not do any work, this is not the series for you. We are rolling up our sleeves, getting our hands dirty, actually doing the work. We're starting off with the low-hanging fruit, which is CMMC Level 1 self-assessment. In the previous video, uh, I showed you a sample CMMC Level 1 network diagram, just showing you the flow of how the FCI, that federal contract information, flows throughout the organization's network. And for this series, we are using a sample company that is hosted. I'm, we are using a fictitious company that is using Microsoft 365 commercial. They have business premium licenses. That's where they're storing their FCI. And then for their CUI, they're using Prevail as their CUI enclave. Continuing on with CMMC level one, just a reminder is 15 requirements for level one at FAR 52.204. Dash 21 is the requirements that we are looking at. And those are taken from this SP 800 dash 171. Okay, let's jump into it. So we are in the access control family. Remember there are 14 families for the entire NIST SP 800 171 series. And for CMMC level one, there are four families. Access control. And we are going to start with 3.1.1. To authorize access control, limit information system access to authorized users, processes acting on behalf of authorized users or devices. So including other information systems to provide you the context, our system for processing, storing, or transmitting FCI, we have our endpoints, so those laptops, MacBooks, and then where we're actually storing that FCI, which is going to be in Microsoft 365 whether that's Microsoft Outlook email, um, also SharePoint and OneDrive. So those kind of the three areas where we're storing that FCI in a cloud environment and then also on the endpoint hard drive. So that's our system. I always want to look at the assessment objectives because that's how you're going to be able to do a thorough self-assessment to make sure that your organization has properly and fully implemented all of the requirements. First one, we need to determine if authorized users are identified. So as we're performing this self-assessment for our fictitious organization in this series, authorized users are identified. How are we doing that? As I mentioned, we're using Microsoft 365. So in order to identify those users, we're going to first create accounts for those users within Entra ID, formerly known as Active Directory. So we're going to need to have a documented procedure that defines our the account requests, approval and provisioning process. So having that procedure, we're making sure that the person, manager, senior leadership who approves uh, that request going to be separate from the person, maybe that IT administrator who actually provisions the account. So typically that flow is going to follow where the IT administrator is going to receive the request, verify that it's been approved by the appropriate party, and then provision that account within our Microsoft 365 environment using Entra ID, assigning them a unique username and password that can satisfy us identifying. Next, we need to make sure that the processes acting on behalf of authorized users are identified. So what processes are we talking about? Think about your service accounts, automated processes like data backup, antivirus, network vulnerability scans. Those are the type of processes that typically are automated, but we need to make sure that all of those processes are authorized by a unique user and associated with that unique user. We can pull up the list of authorized processes and service accounts within our Microsoft 365 environment and just validate that all of those services are, are associated with a user. Moving right along. Next, devices and or other systems authorized to connect to the systems are identified. 
So for this one, we can leverage Microsoft Intune. So for all of the mobile devices that are accessing our network, uh, whether that's the laptops, phones, et cetera, we have those enrolled in Microsoft Intune, which is a mobile device management tool off native to Microsoft 365. We're going to include up the list of authorized devices that can access the system, aka Microsoft 365, and make sure there's no rogue devices. There are only devices that are authorized, that are enrolled and centrally managed by Intune. Certainly, when factor to seeing if you're allowing BYOD in your environment, want to ensure that those devices are enrolled into Intune so you can control the access and you can set minimum requirements for being able to access Microsoft 365. So make sure they have screen lock or antivirus, other, other criteria you can set for the mobile devices. All right, last, so this one has four assessment objectives, A, B, C, and D. So for D, system access is limited to authorized users. Again, we can go back to Entra ID and look at the list of authorized users. Also, we wanna ensure that those users are assigned roles and have the least privileges. In the context of CMMC level one, federal contract information, perhaps not everyone needs access to that FCI. That may not be working on those contracts. So we want to limit that access based on the roles. You may have a, a, just a standard user role. You may have, I'm going to have it separate from your privileged users. So you'll know, be looking at a list of those authorized users, what roles they have, type of access if they're assigned to different groups. Can they read, write, edit FCI files that stored in OneDrive or SharePoint? Make sure that each each user has a uh, specific username and password. And another way you can test this is try to log into Microsoft 365 with just a random username and password, which should result in denied access. So you can look at the audit logs to verify and see any failed login attempts that would validate that system access is limited to authorized users. One step further, if you have that Let's say the OneDrive, that folder where you're storing the FCI, if you have that limited to certain users, you can have a, a user that's not on that list try to access that folder and they should have a, a access denied message. You should not be able to access that folder if they haven't been granted access. Again, we have four assessment objectives for limiting system access. This is a foundational control for access control to the system where we're processing, storing, or transmitting federal contract information, FCI. If someone doesn't have a, a need to know, this is not public information, so they shouldn't have access to it. We want to use Entra ID to make sure that we're properly provisioning the accounts and granting the appropriate access. We're going to use Microsoft Intune for mobile device management, ensuring that we're tracking and managing devices that are accessing our system. And then role-based access control within Entra ID to make sure that users have the proper access. And then also with the service accounts and automated processes, those have to be associated with the user and authorized appropriately. It's another good resource for you, the Microsoft Technical Reference Guide for CMMC. So it maps the Microsoft products and services solution uh, maps the, pro the Microsoft product services and solutions to the CMMC practices. The version I have is March 2022. I, don't, I believe that's the latest version, but you can always check to make sure that you have the latest version. So if we go to page 15, it takes us to, it actually should be ACL 1, 3.1.1, because it is a level one practice. See, it shows us the primary services that Microsoft, Microsoft offers that will help satisfy this requirement, secondary services, additional access, and then other um, links to how you can implement these, these services. For more information. A really good resource for helping you navigate the requirements. That's a good resource for you if you're using Microsoft 365 to manage your endpoints that it's that are accessing your environment where you're storing 
FCI. And I'll show you one more resource, the Microsoft product placemat for CMMC 2.0. This is a, this also just goes into detail, helping you map the Microsoft product services and solutions to the requirements. So if we go here to ACL1-3.1.1, double click on it, it will show us in this section, essentially, how to satisfy the requirement using the Microsoft products. But it also emphasizes that it's always gonna be a shared responsibility model for the vast majority of these requirements. So it just lets you know, okay, the customer has a responsibility for authorizing access to the system. So you're the one that's granting the access, but Microsoft provides the technical controls for this software as a service solution, showing you what's gonna be inherited and what percentage are going to be satisfied by the primary controls offered by Microsoft. It's another good resource you can find on the Microsoft website. And I'll also upload this to the CMMC Proof LinkedIn group and have access. There you have it. See, we quickly made it through 3.1.1. So that level one, once we complete our level one self-assessment, we're gonna jump into the big beast, <laughs> level two. Go through all of the CMMC level two requirements and assessment objectives and just walk you through the type of evidence that the certified CMMC assessor will be looking for doing your CMMC level two certification assessment, taking baby steps, methodically working through all of these requirements, not just talking about them, telling you what the requirements are, actually walking you through, letting you know what type of evidence you should be gathering, creating, prepared to present for your assessment. I hope you got some value from this video. Make sure you follow us throughout this series and always you can let me know other videos you'd like to see me create. Put it down in the comments. Till next time.